All right, everyone, HR Heritech special segment. We are welcoming back a boomerang guest, Janelle Lopez, who was here with us. When was it, Janelle? Early February. So about yeah. over three months ago, plus or minus. Yeah. And if you remember, Janelle came on as she was going through her search and the conundrum of whether she wanted to go for a number one chief people officer role for the first time or take a big number two job at a larger company underneath a chief people officer. A lot of folks are going through this and obviously still are. And the wisdom that you unleashed, the vulnerability of what you were kind of weighing, and some of the struggles of of that journey was really helpful. So since then, Janelle has taken a number two role at Coursera and has been there for about, what, three months now? Just just approaching my second month, so second still month. a newbie. Okay. I love it. I love it. So tell us, because I remember you were you were kind of hell bent on the number one role when we talked three months ago, but you were talking to both opportunities and you had both opportunities. So tell us what what changed. How did you come to that conclusion? What was the process you went through? Yeah, and I think first, thanks for having me back. I'm excited to be here, and I think. Kelly, my journey to landing at Coursera was months and months of preparation and networking, as you you know, when we talked about, I think in total, the last four months as part of my search, I talked to upward of 75 people, went through six multi-round processes. And I think the roles where I had the most traction ultimately were those that were most connected to my network. So I know you and Nolan spend a ton of time on the show talking about the importance of putting yourself out there, being intentional about who you meet new connections. And I couldn't agree more with that approach. I think relationships matter and taking the time to foster them is no matter where you are in your journey, whether you're looking, whether you're in your role that you're happy with, take the time to do it. It's so important. And I think you know, the advice that Nolan particularly gave me when we talked last is, are you settling for a number two role? And don't settle if you really, really want that number one job. And I have to be honest, that was constantly in the back of my head as I'm looking at number two type roles, leading a business partner team in a similar capacity that I did for so long at SurveyMonkey. And if you had to ask me now, do I feel that I settled? I don't. Do I still feel that I'm going to find success in a number one job at some point? Absolutely. And I think for me, it was less about the job title and level, but more around a few key drivers that were most important to me and where I landed next, which is something that I felt really connected to the mission, a place where the people function was valued and had credibility and respect by the executive team and the CEO. Again, that is so important to me because otherwise it's going to be an uphill battle going in there. And I think that is something that was deeply important to me. I've seen that done really well and I know it enables the function to find the most success. I also was looking for a place where my experience could be uniquely positioned to drive the business forward and a role that would teach me, add to my skills of people leadership and allow me to step into the top job more seamlessly when I'm ready to do so. So that's Mm -hmm. kind of what went into my thought process. Again, those key drivers, no matter what the role was, continue to be important to me in finding my next opportunity. Totally. And if I have to channel Nolan, he's sick today, which is why it's you and I, he would say, did you settle? Do you feel like you settled? And what I'm hearing you say is a lot of those criteria and the reasons you took this job at Coursera are a lot of the same criteria for the number one role. Exactly. It was just a different environment. Yeah. And, and I could have taken a number one role that maybe didn't fill all those things that were really important to me. And maybe I would have felt like I was settling just because my aspirations were to land that type of job. Yeah. And and tell tell us how you assessed, because you mentioned it was the right environment. The people team was well respected. You felt like this is going to prep you for that number one job. How did you suss yeah. that out with your new boss, your mm-hmm. chief people officer and the organization? Yeah, I think it is. It was asking some really hard questions, Kelly, and not being intimidated or scared by what I learned, right? Because I think the reality is every company is going through a period of change and transformation right now. And I think assuming that any company is immune from that is the wrong mindset. So I went in with some really hard hitting questions to really understand 
what am I walking into? And I think to me, those types of roles is really where I feel that my leadership experience is most needed, where I'm going to have the most opportunities to influence and drive change. And so I think it was more to your point, making sure that I asked the hard questions. I spent enough time with the team that I would be in the trenches with. And what is the, where is the business opportunity as well? And when, where is the business struggling and how can we bridge people, you know, initiatives, leadership relationships to help foster and push the business forward? Can you, you know, we like to push on this show. Do you got one or two of those hard questions? Um, I think something along the lines of you and Nolan talked about, like, why shouldn't I take this role? Right. And I think it's being very vulnerable in some way is, you know, be really, really honest with me. Like if you, (laughs) you were to give me some honest advice and I think it's okay to ask those hard questions. And I think it's okay, you know, to push the CPO that you're interviewing with on be very honest and real with me, because again, you don't want a candidate to walk in on day one and feel they were missold the role. And I think it's our role when we're interviewing to challenge them and push them to give you the context you need. Totally. And yeah. I'm assuming like doing that, what could be, you know, exhausting, semi awkward work up front with these hard questions. A lot of time, you probably felt better day one, like you were already a part of the team. It probably made your onboarding easier. Yeah, absolutely. And I think walking in when a company is going through transformation and change, like I feel that I'm somewhat unfazed by it because I felt like I really knew what I was walking into versus being surprised because I didn't ask the right questions or I didn't ask the hard questions. Hey, everyone. We'll be right back in a moment after a word from our sponsors. There's a world where your CRM is powerful, easily configured, and deeply intuitive. Atio makes that a reality. Atio is a radically new CRM built specifically for the new era of companies. It's flexible, easily configures to your unique data structures, works for any go-to-market motion from self-serve to sales-led. Atio automatically enriches your contacts, syncs your emails and calendar, lets you create powerful reports, and quickly builds Zapier-style automations. The next era of companies deserves more than a one-size-fits-all CRM with an outdated UX. Join 11 Labs, Replicate, Modal, and more. Try Atio instantly at atio.com. That's A-T-T-I-O dot com. And tell them Nolan and Kelly from HR Heretics sent you. And you mentioned 75-ish conversations before yes. you landed on your next opportunity, which sounds exhausting and a lot. And you mentioned the networking. You yeah. said this took months of networking. What does that mean for people that are listening? What, what, what do you mean by networking? What did you do? Because I think it's such a good point I'd love to drill in on. Yeah. And then when I say 75 conversations, I, I want to be clear, that doesn't mean that I had 75 interviews, right? I think all of those conversations led me ultimately to landing interviews. And I think, Kelly, it's a mix of who have I worked with in the past? What is some of the people leadership teams that I've worked with that I know of in the network? Who are the VC connections that I've been introduced to fostering those relationships? People who have been in an advisor capacity. Um, and I think it's a variety of not just people leaders, but business leaders, right? Former heads of finance, former chief revenue officers, and really, you know, developing that network, asking questions, what are you seeing? What are you hearing? What are the gaps? And, and just taking the time to do it. And I think that was so informative, even before I started interviewing for roles, because I really just wanted to feel like I had a good grasp on what is the market? What is the landscape? What are people looking for this at this point in time for people stepping into those top jobs. And so, yeah, some of it was friends, peers, mentors. But then I think where you have to get really vulnerable is making introductions to VCs, to advisors, to people leaders you don't even know. And I think that is was really important to me. It, it was a, definitely not an area of comfort. I had to step outside of my comfort zone. But I think I was really pleased with the receptiveness and willingness for people to connect with me. and. I strive to do that as well because I felt it was so valuable um, for people to take 15 minutes with me. It doesn't have to be a long conversation. I think I think that is such an important point and something that I 
I didn't really learn until a bit later in my career, right? Which is, it is not about networking with just HR people or exec recruiters, right? You and I talked, I was like, forget that. Go to the VCs, go to here, right? And, and, And to your point, how willing these people are to connect and meet you and learn and talk with you, which Mm -hmm. you might think the opposite. Definitely. And another thing that I was very intentional with is when I finally landed at Coursera is circling with a lot of people and just thanking them for the time. Here's where I landed, you know, and and all of them, them were so gracious and said, I'm so excited. Let's keep in touch. I'd love to continue to hear how it's going there. You know, and I think that is really important. And again, I know another area we you've talked about in the show is making sure that you're making the connections and fostering those relationships because it is so important. And whether you it leads you to a new opportunity down the road or just, hey, I have this problem. I'd love your perspective on it. Have you ever experienced this? And I think that is, again, that's who I am as a person and being able to build and maintain those relationships. But it doesn't come without effort, right? You have to be intentional about it. I, I just want to take a huge fucking highlighter and we didn't even plan this. And you said, circle back, follow up, um, give back, cultivate these relationships, which is the work versus taking yeah. something and running. And, and that, that is probably the biggest secret sauce as far as networking, in my opinion. And Janelle and I worked together years ago. We're big fans of follow up, right? Yeah. <laughs> circle back and follow up. You have to do that with networking and give back and check in, even when you don't need anything at all. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, did you learn anything about the job market in your seventy-five conversations? Anything you'd offer the audience, or advice you got, or trends, or things you're seeing as far as what's going on out there right now? Yeah, I mean, not, it's it's tough out there, right? It was brutal, and I think there's an incredible talent pool. And I touched on this before, and I think it still remains true. Is approach each interview, each conversation as a learning opportunity, ask the really hard questions, practice your pitch, refine your story. And I think I will be the first to say, you will be disappointed when you do not get a role that you thought was the one, or you thought it was the perfect fit. But I guarantee you when you do find the right role, you're going to look back at all those rejections and be like, this was for this reason why I didn't get it. And it, it just feels right. So I don't think I learned anything new or different that I didn't share the first time, Kelly. I just think it's really, again, putting yourself out there, being vulnerable in those conversations. And again, finding something that works for you and not so focused on maybe what you set out to do, but more so think about what are the key things that are most important to you and does that role fulfill those? And is it going to propel you to doing something great down the road? Yeah. Getting reps is half the battle, you know? Yeah. Okay. So last question before we wrap up, what's next? Um, What's your map in this role? What's your path? Why are you feeling great about this? Yeah, right now I'm really happy with where I am and I'm excited for the work ahead at Coursera. I think I haven't lost sight of wanting a run of the top job. And I think that will happen when it's supposed to, if it's supposed to down the road. And I think I continue to be driven by new experiences, building new relationships, inserting myself in a way that allows me to get closer to another business to understand how it works, what's working, what's not, and developing a team. And I think those things are really important to me. And Coursera right now is providing me these opportunities. And I'm really energized by the new opportunity and challenge. I love it. I love it. Well, I think I speak for everyone when I say we're all excited to follow you and (laughs) watch your career and cheer when you um, grow into that number one role and the great work you'll do at Coursera. Uh, Thank you for coming back for another round. I'm sure we'll have you for for round three. And all right. Thanks all. Have a good day. Thank you. HR Heretics is a podcast from Turpentine, the network behind Econ 102, Moment of Zen, and Turpentine VC. Subscribe, five stars, share it on Apple, YouTube. Spotify, anywhere you get your podcasts, all the things.